When I was in the 11th grade, it was a trigonometry class. On her wall was Proverbs 4, 7. The beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get insight. <laughs> but that's a strange verse in a trigonometry class. In a sinful and dangerous world, almost all acts of wisdom require some measure of courage. So wisdom combines knowledge of the facts of reality, specific immediate discernment, insight, intuition. The greatest human wisdom with all its factual knowledge, all of its situational insight, all of its necessary resolve will sometimes be thwarted in achieving its intended righteous goals because only God has the power to guarantee his wisdom. So let's define God's wisdom then. Divine wisdom is the perfect factual knowledge of reality and the perfect situational insight and the omnipotent resolve that together will succeed in achieving his intended righteous goals. They cannot be fathomed by humans. They cannot be thwarted by humans. So don't be passive. Listen, seek, pursue. She will be found. Get wisdom. How? Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you thinks that he is wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. He's not merely saying, if you seek to be wise in the eyes of God, the world will regard you as a fool. He is saying, we must happily embrace the role of fool in the world. Thoughtful fools, to be sure. Hope-filled fools, to be sure. Happy fools with lots of serious joy, to be sure. But fools, nevertheless, unashamed, happy fools. We must not be ashamed of being a fool for Christ. You give it all up if you're embarrassed by Christ and his word. It's not self-pitying, not dour, not defensive, not forlorn, not miserable, not oh poor me fools, but unashamed, happy, hope-filled fools for Christ. So prize her, Pray for her, pursue her in the word, in the world, in relation to Jesus. Become a fool that you may become wise.